Hey everyone, so today I have this very nice M1 MacBook Air. It's in here for repair. There's a liquid spill and it's not turning on. So it's really cool. We love getting M1 MacBook Airs, and M1 MacBook Pros, M1 Pro Maxes. We get quite a bit of them. We have lots of videos talking about keyboard replacements, screen replacements, logic board repair. And today, this video, we're adding to it. We're getting another logic board repair here. So let's get right into it. Let's go ahead and take a look at it, see where the damage is, what we can do for them. All right, so we have it open. Um, I already disconnected the battery, just take a quick look. Uh, another th thing we always like to do, especially if we see liquid around this area, we always like to check to see if the LCD connection is okay, which it is. So that's one thing because you don't want to be doing this, then you see that there may need a screen replacement or anything, so we always let them know. So, um, there's nothing super obvious there. We can see a little bit of stains on this side, probably closer to the battery connection. And we wanna see what we're getting here, so where we can actually get. Just because there's liquid doesn't necessarily mean that there is always gonna be a massive problem all the time. You know, there there is a problem, obviously, it's a pretty big problem, uh, especially if there's corrosion on the board or something really obvious. At least the backside doesn't seem to be too much there, but let's see what we get. So if we plug it in and the board's completely dead, uh, let's see what we're getting here. If it's not powering on, um, there's usually short, right? And we can see that there is a short, how, is it, how we're getting about 5 volts and 0.01 amps. So it's not really doing anything too great. Most likely there's some type of liquid spill. I mean, obviously there's liquid spill. Um, it's not doing anything here really much. And we can also check to see our top port, make sure we're matching up, make sure there's something else going on, or is it consistent? And it is. Um, so we do see that. Oh, if you haven't noticed already, I didn't even talk about it, but there's corrosion on this side of the board. This is where the power button is. You can see it right here. You see that? Definitely needs to at least, this is actually removal. It's a separate side of the board. And um, just disconnect that and see if it changes anything else. And then we can kind of just work our way and see how everything works. Now, at least there's a good cover here nowadays. Before there was a heat sink and a fan. And I guess there's no more fans anymore in the airs. They're called MacBook Air, but they don't have any fans. So, however you want to call MacBook Air, <laughs> I don't know why you would call it MacBook Air. It doesn't have fans. I, th I think what was the reason behind the Air? If, if you know the reason why they actually call it the MacBook Air, um, just let me know down below. I know that was a Steve Jobs MacBook. That was one of the ones he presented. I remember seeing that presentation on stage. It was really cool how it brings out the envelope. And it's one of the more iconic things I've ever seen. Um, the, his Obviously, the way he presents things is, is absolutely fantastic, second to none. Um, it was so great watching him always just talk smack about other people. <laughs> it's what he used to do. And he's like, you know what? They do it this way, but we're going to do it this way. And we always appreciate that. We always like forward thinkers, everything. Um, here, uh, we want to take a look always to see if there's any corrosion around this area because this is actually a separate board itself. This is where the trackpad goes, and it also connects to... Um, the main uh, keyboard and logic board too. So all the connections are here. So if you have a problem with the trackpad, you have a problem with uh, the keyboard, this can be an issue too. There's a lot of, there could be corrosion, there could be something else here. We obviously see that there's something over here. So I don't know why I removed that first. I was just kind of thinking as I was talking. So this is disconnected from the main board. Let's take out uh, the power uh, button too, because the power button is also connected here too. And we want to see if we change any other symptoms or see anything else. So that's pretty clean. So the only other thing would be really the speaker here. So let's go ahead and try our voltage again, see if that changes anything. Because uh, it can, especially if there's a major short there, there's any liquid blocking it. It could definitely impact things, especially how there's a lot of stuff going on here. This is also an audio board, and it also does have the speaker connected to it. And obviously, it goes all the way underneath. And I should connect somewhere here, or it could be like right here. I don't really remember. Uh, I thought that was open before. Okay, so let's go ahead and try it. Let's plug it in, see if it changes anything. Still getting five volts. We're getting more amps and we're getting 20 volts now. And this is probably gonna turn on now because we're magic, magically delicious. Actually, we've got 20 volts and we're getting 0.04 amps. I don't know if this one needs a battery. So we eliminated one problem and we have another. Oh wait, there it is. The amperage is crawling. I'm not even showing you guys. 20 volts and the amperage is actually climbing a bit. So the current's going up. Uh, is there anything that we see? This should still turn on with with or without. Oh yeah, we don't have uh, <laughs> we don't have the LCD in either, so we wouldn't know. So let's go ahead and try that because uh, I'm not paying attention. This is Friday actually, by the way. I'm recording. It's like six o'clock on a Friday, so I'm still here. Yes, I'm still here. This is what I like to do. This is my Friday night party time. So let's go ahead and plug it in. See if it brings up anything here. It's a really nasty screen. 
Oh, and we got power. Wow, easy, huh? This is an easy repair. Okay, so it did come on. I didn't want to show uh, the, the customer's name, but it's there. So we know at least a few things that we're very aware of now. Um, one, that this is the major problem here. Most likely we need to do a replacement. And let's see, two, if I could flip over this board and see if we can get anything else. So we're going to go ahead and unscrew it. We're just going to open it real quick, take a quick peek, make sure there's nothing else going on, make sure there's no other corrosion underneath or anything and I think we might be pretty good looks very clean uh, we can go under the microscope um, if there's something interesting I will show that under the microscope but it doesn't really look like it looks good everything else looks healthy it looks very good here so alright looks good we're really excited now because nothing's really been impacted another thing we can look at would be the battery connection battery connection oh so by the way there is no extra spill we just did a quick scan on it uh, the battery connection can always be a problem too, especially in this area. We don't really see anything else. This looks pretty clean. Not too really really worried about that. But let's go ahead and pop this up because you guys are probably a little bit more interested. And this is your main issue here. And you see how all those resistors, the caps, nothing looks great here. Right? This is not a fun area to be in. Uh, those caps are rusted too. I think it would be better to replace it if I have one because I think... We do have a replacement one here. We don't really want to care about something that's easily replaceable, especially if it's something we can easily do. Okay, so I do have, I have a new one right here. Nice board. Nice, very nice. Nice stuff here. So I do have the board, and I also do have this one. It's really nice. So we can go ahead and plug it in. We can test it, make sure it's fine. So I'm going to go do that. Put the screws back in, make sure it holds. I'm sure this is just going to fix. It's going to turn on right away. But we'll be right back right when I just kind of put this in and make sure it works. Let's make sure at least this power button is going to be good. Good. So power button is good there. And let's go ahead. We're going to test it. I know we work really hard actually on videos and to show you guys um, stuff that actually does make uh, stuff work. Like we do lots of fixes for MacBooks. We do data recoveries. We do lots of cool things on this channel. We always want to spread the word, and sometimes just YouTube just doesn't want to show absolutely everyone out there. So what's really the way to do it? A way you can really help uh, show our videos and spread the word about the fixing, about fixing computers, about lots of uh, software repairs that we do, lots of cool talking points, lots of other cool, interesting things that we do in this channel, and show you guys as well. All you have to do is just hit that like button at the bottom there. If you do, it really does help YouTube promote our videos more, especially not just on our channel but across to everyone else that does have a similar problem that you may have and you might actually be saving somebody's MacBook or saving someone a lot of money just by doing that so they can actually see our video how we do fixes on them we do lots of cool other stuff too not just this video but if you actually go to other ones too appreciate it if you go always hit that or even subscribe it really does mean the world to us it really does help us out a lot this should be enough to see if at least power is on see if we get something here so let's go ahead and grab my little USB-C with my voltmeter here make sure it's testing out Make sure it's okay. Man, that screen looks nasty. I'll definitely have to make sure to clean that after. Looks really gross. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Well, it's liquid spill, right? It should be probably pretty nasty. Okay, now we're getting 20 volts here. And you heard the chime actually come up. And we have power again now. And we also have a working uh, power button. I'll show you guys that. I'll wait for it to load and then I'll shut it off. And I'll turn on with that. I'm going to go press the power button on this side here and it should turn on. Now, and we're still, we are getting our 20 volts and everything, so it looks to be good. But let me press the power button. Let's make sure that power button works. And boom, it did turn on again. So everything looks to be pretty good. I will fully test it. We'll make sure. But uh, it looks to be pretty good. That was the main short that was going on there. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching the repair on the nice A2337 M1 MacBook Air. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, don't forget to leave that like. It really does help us a lot help spread the word that we do lots of MacBook repair and show you guys how to do it as well. These nice M1s are very exciting. We love working on them. We love doing any type of MacBook liquid seal repairs, Mac repairs in general. We do software talks about uh, some some things we also have about some they're like uh, activation locks and privacy locks, lots of other things that are going on. If, if you're interested from a tech standpoint, a tech shop standpoint, definitely go ahead and check out our channel. We have lots of stuff talking about that. We also do data recoveries and lots of other cool things as well. But yes, this is working and we're so happy and and we hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe for more content and we'll see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned for a lot more MacBook 
Pro, MacBook Air, M1 repairs. These are the, this is the A2337 model. We also do the A2338. And we also have another cool video checking out Pro and M1 Pro Max. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check it out. It's really close to Liquid Spill repair we did as well. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Bye.